X, why we spend so much time, why I want to spend so much time on the book of X is not only that he's a history book or that he's just talking about the missionary journeys of some of the apostles, but it has very important events that set the structure for the Christian church. We are the Gentile Christian church. So we, as we go along, we learn a lot of things, a lot of things, especially from the apostle Paul himself and how we can actually align the book of Acts with the epistles of Paul. And later, I'm going to show you an example why the two should be aligned together when you study. So we now go to episode 72 of Discovery Class, and we are at Acts chapter 16. We left Paul and Silas in the prison. So where is this event happening? This event is happening in this place called Philippi or Philippi. This is Paul's second missionary journey, which he left, he split with Barnabas. Now he's taking along somebody called Silas and he recruited Timothy along the way. What happened was that there was this slave girl who had the powers to tell fortunes because she had the evil spirit in her and her owners were making a lot of money out of her. But one day, Paul decided that he was going to cast out the spirit from her so that she no longer had the power to do fortune telling. What do you think the owners did? They were very angry. They seized Paul and Silas and they dragged them to the marketplace. And before you know it, the magistrate was there and they accused Paul and Silas for teaching foreign customs as well as subverting the Roman law. So here, this magistrate decided to beat them up and throw them into prison and got a jailer to take care of them. Now, it seems very strange because you know why? The Roman legal system was a very established system at that time. One of the most established legal systems because the Roman legal system has been established since 753 BC. And they, should, they follow the law to the T. Even when they wanted to execute Jesus, Pontius Pilate said, no. Okay, because he has done nothing wrong. So here was this magistrate who just did what we call detention without trial. So we're going to continue the story and the story will have Tim Vell to share with us. Thank you for your patience to wait two weeks to share this story with us. So I'll pass the time now to Tim Vell to tell us what happened in the prison. So Acts 16 verses 23 to 25, it tells us that the chief magistrates had Paul and Silas stripped flogged and thrown into prison, their feet bound in stocks. At midnight, the two men were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, a violent earthquake shook the whole jail. All the doors were opened and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer, thinking the prisoners have escaped, wanted to kill himself until Paul stops him and assures him that no one had left the prison. The jailer was very grateful and he escorted Paul and Silas out. He asked them what must he do to be safe. So they told him to believe in Jesus, him and his family. After hearing the gospel, the jailer and his family believed and were baptized. In the morning, the chief magistrates ordered for Paul and Silas to be released. Paul refused to leave without proper apology for their mistreatment as Roman citizens. Alarmed, the chief magistrates came personally to apologize and escort them out, urging them to leave town. Before departing Philippi, the apostles visited and encouraged the believers at Lydia's house. Paul and Silas were in the prison. This is about midnight. So this chief jailer has control. He's supposed to take care of them. He's supposed to take charge and make sure that they don't escape. And here is Paul and Silas praying and singing hymns. Okay, now understand that hymns are basically religious praise songs. So here they were singing and praying. This is what they could do because they were already chained up in stocks. And if you have seen the picture, stocks are basically huge blocks of wood. They put their feet in and they lock them up in there. So they could not move at all. There was a great earthquake and everybody's chains and all that were loose, including the prisoners. There were a few prisoners there. So here, all the doors flew open. 
everybody's chains came loose. The jailer got a shock of his life and he realised that he's going to be in big trouble. So straight away, he took out his sword. He wanted to kill himself because he knew that these prisoners are going to escape. But what do you know? Paul says, look, we are all here. Don't worry. So the question that I kept having in my mind was, now the prison gates are all open, the chains are released, why didn't Paul escape from the prison? Just when God had given him freedom, but he didn't choose that freedom. Why? Answer me. D, because something was more important than his freedom, okay? D, D and E, okay? Anybody put A? Some of you are not old enough to understand that arthritis can prevent you from running. <laughs> we are facing that now. You just check with some of the older ones. Or, or perhaps he was a very lawful citizen and he didn't want to break the law. So Val says B, D, E. Okay, good. Now, I like the answers. Okay? May says D and E. Very good. Something was more important than his freedom. I like that. Because he didn't escape because he knew there was something for him to do that, there. And what was that something? It was the jailer. So actually, this event is not really the release of Paul. It's the release of the jailer from his spiritual bondage. Now, this jailer, was he, do you think he's a Jew, a believer, or a Gentile? He's most likely a Roman non-Jew or non-believer. Straight away, he says, what must I do to be saved? And Paul just says, look, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. And not only you, Peter, think of this, not only you, you and your whole household. So the first thing you need to do is you believe in the Lord Jesus. Then your whole household will be saved. Of course, May will say, hmm, isn't it conversion is personal? It's true. They will have to accept on this, their own accord. But somehow, God favors the head of the household who becomes a believer. And it's so clear here. So those of you who are head of homes, fathers, mothers, grandmothers, whatever it is, please remember that your acceptance of the Lord Jesus will affect and will be favored for your family as well. Verse 32. Look at verse 32. Verse 32, Val, can you read? Then they spoke the message of the Lord to him along with everyone in his house. Okay, thank you. So they spoke the word of the Lord or the message of the Lord. A lot of your versions say the word of the Lord. What is it? What is the message of the Lord that Paul told them? And mind you, he had to tell them within an hour. What do you think he shared with them in that very short hour? Did Paul open the Bible to share with them? You will notice that Everywhere they went, they were just they talk about Jesus, his death and his resurrections. Just talk about how Jesus came to this earth, died and was resurrected. And after that, then if we accept Jesus, then you'll be saved. Salvation through faith in Jesus. You are right. After that, the jailer washed their wounds. And in verse 33, everyone in his household were immediately baptized. And from then on, they rejoiced and they spent the night there. The next morning, actually the magistrate, the judge that had actually ordered them to be beaten up, flogged and put in the jail, then decided to order their release. So the jailer was quite happy. And he says, the chief magistrates have sent to release you. Therefore, come out now and go in peace. A very Christian way of talking. Go in peace. If you were Paul, would you go in peace? You would think that as a Christian, we are supposed to go in peace. We are not supposed to cause trouble. We are not supposed to stand up for our rights. We are just, God will take care of them. God will count in them. But what did Paul do? I like this. I like Adam to read this. But Paul said to the officers, they beat us public, publicly without trial, even though we are Roman citizens and threw us into prison. And now do they want to get rid of us quietly? No. Let them come themselves and escort us out. Would you have done that? 
if you were Paul at that time? Why well, I believe the reason why God chose Paul. Because Paul is not a person that you can reckon with easily. And Paul is a Roman citizen. He's an educated man. He knows the law. He knows the law. And here, what is the reason why Paul did not go in peace? Why do you think? Why do you think that in this instance, Paul had to stand up and insist on justice? They beat us up publicly without a trial, even though we are Roman citizens. And of course, the, actually the magistrate, they all didn't know they are Roman citizens. Look, they want, they better come and escort us out. So why? Was it because, so that next time it doesn't happen? It, was it because Paul was trying to make them understand, don't mess with the Christians, don't mess with God's believers. It could be personality, right? Not all of us will do that, but God put Paul in that position. That's why he never ran out of the jail. He had a mission that was to preach to the jailer. He also had another mission so that these Roman people will not, will not, abuse the Christians that have just disbelieved. And that's the reason why, that's the reason why I believe why Philippians are happy church. Remember when Dr. Fanoa was talking about the book of Philippians with us, he went through a series and he says that Philippians is a happy church. I believe that Paul made that stand so that the Romans had not even touched the church. I believe this is not written, but I believe that. Right. That's why sometimes for us to stand up for our rights, it's not only for ourselves, it's for our community, it's for our family, it's for, it's for our church. So now we move on to Acts chapter 17. And I'll pass it on to Tim May. Chapter 17 goes on to two other different cities. When Paul and his companion passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a Jewish synagogue. As was his custom, Paul went to the synagogue. On three Sabbath day, he reasoned with them from scripture, explaining and proving that the Messiah had to suffer and rise from death. This Jesus I am pro proclaiming to you is the Messiah, he said. Some of the Jews were pursued and joined Paul and Silas as did a large number of God-fearing Greek and quite a few prominent women. But some of the Jews were jealous they gathered some troublemakers from the marketplace to form a mob and started a riot. They rushed to Jason's house in search of Paul and Silas in order to bring them out to the crowd. But when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some other believer before the city council. They shouted, This man has caused trouble all over and come now here. Jason has welcomed them into his house and they are all defying Caesar's decree, saying that there is another king, one called Jesus. Hearing this, the crowd and the city official were thrown into turmoil. They made Jason and the others post a heavy bill and then they let them go. And at night itself, the believers sent Paul and Silas away to Berea. When they arrived in Berea, they went to the Jewish synagogue. And here again, they do the same thing. Uh, Paul uh, used the scripture again to reason with the people in Berea. However, the people in Berea here were more open-minded and they listened to Paul's message eagerly. They searched and examined the scriptures every day to see if Paul and Silas were teaching the truth, just like what our pastor like to say. Don't believe in everything what others say. Even pastor, read your Bible and study, fact-check yourself. And as a result, many more of the Jews here believe this time as did many of the prominent Greek men and women. But some of the Jews in Thessalonica learned that Paul was now again preaching the word of God in Berea. They went there and stirred up troubles. The believer at, at once and they sent Paul to the cause while Silas and Timothy remained behind. The believer escorted Paul all the way to Athens, and they returned to Berea with instruction for Silas and Timothy to join him as soon as possible. From Philippi to Amphipolis is about 50 kilometers, and then to Apollonis, another 40 over kilometers. Ended up in this place called Thessalonica. 
Thessalonica. And the first thing he did was what? They found a Jewish synagogue and as was his custom, he went up uh, to the synagogue service and for three Sabbaths in a row, this is verse 2, he used the scriptures to reason with the people. Scriptures. What is this scriptures that he used to reason with the people? Is it the Bible? Is it, what is it? Understanding that the scriptures here does not mean the Bible because the Bible was not canonized and the, all the books, uh, the New Testament was not even written yet. So it would definitely have to be the Tanakh or the Torah, which is part of the Tanakh and the book of Isaiah. So here it used the scriptures. Why did he use the scriptures to reason with the people? Because they were Jews. Different the audience, you are right. That's why we need to understand and we need to learn actually how it's Paul's strategies. So here he's talking to the Jews and he, he knows it's not only that they are familiar with it, but their life was based on the law, the scriptures, the law. So they use the scriptures, most likely Isaiah, like what Ben said, most likely Isaiah because Isaiah talks about, prophesies about Jesus being born and Jesus dying. And he explained the prophecies in verse 3 and proved that Messiah must suffer and rise in, from the dead. So it will most likely be the prophetic messages that will lead to Jesus. You are right, uh, Linda, they will lead to Jesus. Now, question. I have the question for you. Is Why did Paul continue to preach to the Jews? Remember earlier in the verses when he and Barnabas were rejected and almost beaten up by the Jews and he says, okay, look, I'm going to brush off my feet. And I'm going to go to the Gentiles now. But here again, he's going to the Jews. Everywhere he went, wherever there's a synagogue, this, except for earlier, Philippi, where there was none, on the Sabbath day, you remember this? Sabbath day, they were still keeping the Sabbath. Why did Paul continue to preach to the Jews? B, because he wanted to save his own people. D, because Jews were God's special people. Okay, what else? B, because he wanted to save his own people. Okay. In the synagogue, there were Jews as well as there were God-fearing Greeks. Most likely, he still wanted to save his own people. But like Alinda said last week, they do not no longer have Bumiputra status. The Jews themselves have to accept Jesus as a savior. That's why Paul's scripture reasoning with them was leading them to Jesus. I would think he still wanted to save his own people. The second thing is, it was a custom for him. He, he, he's a Sabbath keeper. So he wanted to go to the synagogue. And at the same time, when in the synagogue, he will reason with them. And yeah, practically, he can use the synagogue for free to evangelize. The ones that actually accepted 17 verse 4, some of the Jews who listened, some were persuaded and joined Paul along with many God fearing Greek men and quite a few prominent women. Here it talks about prominent women a lot. And who are these prominent women? Prominent women, most of them are wives of the Roman officials or the business women like India. We see a new word called God-fearing Greek men. They are God-fearers. And remember last few weeks, we talked about how many different categories of people, believers, converts are there. They are the Jews. Then there are people like Cornelius, who was a believer, but uh, Gentile. And then there, they have this, this jailer, the Roman Gentile. And they have this one called God-fearing Greek people. They are the ones that believe in God, follow the customs, but not circumcised. The Jews became jealous. So what did they do? They make trouble. But notice these, uh, the, the Jews, they were very aggressive. They formed a mob, they started a riot, they dragged out this poor Jason guy who was actually housing Paul and Silas. They arrest Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas were probably hiding somewhere. They arrested their helper, which is Jason. Very aggressive Jews in Thessalonica. Very aggressive, remember that. Very aggressive. Then, after that, they move on to this place which a lot of us know, and that is called Berea. And when they came to Berea, which is verse 10, they went to the Jewish synagogue and started to preach. Now, what's the difference in Berea? Now the Berean Jews were more noble character than those in Thessalonica, for they received the message with great eagerness. 
and examine the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. Okay, so that's that's Thessalonican gangsters, and here you come to Berea, you have the noble man. The Berean Jews were more noble character than those in Thessalonica. What do you mean by noble character? Educated? Will they be a bit more refined? Maybe in the higher class? Academicians? And for when they receive the message with great eagerness, these are Jews, you know, these are Jews, huh? these are not the Greek God fearers, these are Jews. With great eagerness, yet they examine the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. Are we all supposed to do that? Yes. We're all supposed to examine the scriptures to see whether or not what I'm saying is true, what Pastor Ho is saying is true, or whatever preacher you're listening to, whatever preacher you're listening to on YouTube, you need to search the scriptures and see whether or not whatever we say is true. And that was what the Bereans did. This is about AD 50, AD 50, about 20 years after Jesus. Would you prefer to be a Berean? Which one would you want to be? Berean or Thessalonians? Bereans or Thessalonians? Bereans, wow, wonderful. Bereans, Bereans, everybody knows that. Wow, Bereans, we want to be Berean. We want to search the scripture. We want to make sure, we want to examine. Of course, we want to be upper class. Okay. Do you know something? There's no letter to the Bereans by Paul. Searching the scripture is very good, but I want us to study a little bit about Thessalonica because you know why? If you notice that the Thessalonican Jewish people were quite gangster and violent, can you imagine becoming a Christian there in Thessalonica? It would not be easy, definitely, because the Thessalonican Jews, uh, Jews were so aggressive. Hey, they even from Thessalonica, came all the way to Berea to disrupt the, the mission. Yes, Ubarians are Bereans, but are Ubarians Thessalonicans? And how do we know what Thessalonicans are like? Thessalonican Christians. We go to the letters to the Thessalonians. Okay. Actually, it should be Thessalonians, not Thessalonican. Thessalonians. There are two books in the Bible in the New Testament that are written by Paul to the Thessalonians. In the book of Acts, it's basically narrative. Narrative in the Bible are just telling story. Just, it doesn't show emotions or, or express how Paul feels. But when it comes to the epistles of Paul, which I believe is so important as well, you can understand Paul's emotions and you can understand why Paul is writing in this way. Then we better understand the books and the letters, why he wrote it. Because First Thessalonians was written after this missionary journey. Because Paul had to leave Thessalonica quite, quite quickly, quite abruptly. But there were a lot of faithful converts, new converts, who was going to take care of them? Yes, we are, we are Oberians. Okay? We are Oberians. We receive the message with great eagerness and we accept the, examine the scriptures. But if you go to First Thessalonians, the first letter to this church which is under the gangster the city. Here is Paul writing to the Thessalonians. He came of us and of the Lord having received the word in much affection with joy of the Holy Ghost. Paul is writing to the, Th the Thessalonians and he wrote there specifically talking about their affliction. Because if you understand the background, just, just what we read just now, you will understand that the Thessalonian Christians or new believers definitely would have faced much affliction. Paul left, but they were the ones stuck there and the Jews definitely would have abused them. But they stuck there. They never left. They stuck there and they received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. The only one that was there accompanying them was the Holy Ghost. And you know what happened to these Thessalonians? Me, Young? And so you became a model to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. The Lord's message rang out from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, your faith in God has become known everywhere. Therefore, we do not need to say anything about it. Okay. You see, there's no letter to Bereans, but there's a letter to the Thessalonians commanding them of the faith, commanding them. Yes, we should be Bereans, 
but we also should be like the Thessalonians who were firm in their faith. And they became a model to all the believers, not because of they were very good in their scripture. Yes, they continued to study the scriptures, definitely. Because they are God, God-fearing uh, Greeks, they definitely will know the scripture. But their faith, their fervent, they never ran away. That caused the message of the Lord to ring out. Not only in Mac- Macedonia, is the bigger region, huh? the bigger region in Achaia. But in every way, your faith in God has become known. So even today, we are reading about the Thessalonians. But we only read one verse of Bereans. But we read about the Thessalonians and their faith in affliction. If we want to be more effective Christians, we have to stand up. Okay, we don't run away. There was a friend of mine, he says, Hey, now MCO, very good, you know. You know why? Because I can go to any church very proudly. You know, I can attend any church. I can zoom in to UB, I can zoom in to KL, I can zoom in to America, I can zoom in to Australia, I can zoom in to Timbuktu if there's a Zoom or a Facebook Live. And I was just thinking about it. As Christians, are we just spectators that we can zoom in anywhere and just listen? Or are we to be doers of the word like Paul? Or are we to stick to our conviction like the Thessalonians? A lot of Christians, they go to the church to be fed. To be fed. And I'm talking about myself those days. To be fed. Oh, I cannot get this from the church. Okay, lah, I go to another church. If I cannot get this from another church, oh, I go to another church. Where will it end? Yes, you continue to be fed, but you no longer are doers, you no longer are disciples, you no longer are evangelists for Jesus Christ. But if you stick to it, like Ubarians, Uberians, stick to it, whatever happens, we will be like the Thessalonians, whatever affliction, we will continue to build the church and forefront. They step out as leader, discovery class teachers, they step out as Children class teachers, they step up as deacons, they step up. Everybody had to step up because there was no leader. Today we have leaders and then we just sit down and become spectators in the church and we go around and say, oh, I choose this church because, ah, the people dress nicely, you know. Oh, I choose this church because pastor's wife is very pretty, oh, very pretty. Oh, I choose this church because I got rich people there, my, you know, my business connection very good. Oh, I choose this church because, ah, very good scriptures. You choose the church that God wants you to be in. Whether it's affliction, whether it's comfort, whatever it is, you choose the church, just like the Thessalonians. You choose the church that God chooses you to be in, and you stay in there, and you build the church together. And I do hope that Ubarians are like that, because this is the best church in the world, right? I do hope that we are not spectators that are going to build the church together. Last Wednesday, we, I talk about stewardship. And I talk about stewardship of your life. That you present your life as a living sacrifice to the Lord Jesus. Holy and acceptable to Him. So that you can be of good service. Romans 12. Are you the one that has presented your life as a living sacrifice to our Lord Jesus?